Good morning. Welcome to Get Moving. I am Anna. Um, I am not Karen. 10 out of 10 if you spotted that I am not Karen. Um, I am Anna and I am doing Technique Tuesday today. So I hope everybody had a fabulous weekend. What glorious weather, if not a little chilly, but the sunshine is just incredible. So hopefully, um, with some layers, as you can see, I have layers and gloves because um, it is a little chilly. Been out this morning and uh, it was definitely a double buff day for your ears and your face. It's like this, but you could just about see. Uh, but very, very beautiful out there. So I hope everybody had a nice weekend and that um, you are all raring to go for uh, Techniques Tuesday, because of course I know you all did um, one of the videos from the Get Moving Archive yesterday, because it was Monday. Um, I, I know you will have done that. Um, so I'll just witter a little bit longer while people are arriving. Um, Get Moving is all about exercise for people who would typically find moving and exercise a little bit more challenging and that might be because you are living with um, a medical condition um, or maybe a disability maybe you are pre or post operation um, maybe you just don't move as well as you would like to and so get moving is all about some real exercise that we can all do it it doesn't matter who we are keeping our joints moving and uh, working through some of our muscles so that uh, we keep mobile and we get stronger and fitter. Uh, so Technique Tuesday, we will, I will go through a, um, a bit of a key concept. We've, I think Karen has probably covered this one before, but I think it's worth a revisit. We're going to talk about core, um, but we'll save that till the end. So to start off with, we will go through our normal uh, exercises, our normal moves to get me warm because um, it's a little bit chilly in this here shed. I'm out of the sunshine. It is, the, the sun is warm if you can find a sheltered spot, but I'm definitely out of the sunshine. So we're going to do 25 seconds worth of each of our exercises just to get things moving and then we'll do um, a little bit of an exploration of, of our core at the end. And we need our ball. We will be using the ball today. So um, if you haven't got your ball, then quickly grab it now. We're not using it immediately. So if you've got a kind person who is with you, you can ask them very nicely, pl pretty please, to go and get your ball. I'm gonna pop mine down there, ready for um, a few moments. So let's get started. Starting with um, our lower half, with our legs, we are going to be marching on the spot. So if you're standing, as big a move as you can do, building up the move if you need to. If you are seated, let's start as we mean to go on and sitting away from the back of the chair. So sitting towards the front of the chair, but safely so that you're not going to wobble off and lifting those legs up, keeping that back nice and tall as you lift your knees. So we're doing 25 seconds worth. I have my timer all set and ready, it was in my pocket. Are we ready? Three, two, one, away we go. So I can see some good mornings. Good morning, everybody. So let's get those hips awake, get the blood pumping, Nice and steady to start off with, we're just getting warm. But try and do it as big a move as you can do. It does not matter if that move is a little bit smaller than I was doing, that's fine. But just getting, there we go, there's the timer. Getting those legs awake and starting to get that blood moving a bit faster around our body. So back to up the upper body now, shoulder rolls. And this one's the same whether you are seated or standing. So big moves of the shoulders. And if you can, include the arms. Really squeezing those shoulder blades as you lift your arms back and round and down. 
So you should feel those shoulder blades moving on your upper back. In three, two, one, away we go. And we're aiming for as big a move as you can do. It doesn't matter if that's without the arms, rolling the shoulders, but if you can include your arms, then do. This is really good for strengthening our upper back and looking after our posture. So shoulder movement is important for posture. Oh, and do one more. And to look after our posture, we, we need our back muscles to be strong and our shoulders to be able to move. So ro shoulder rolls are a brilliant way of improving our posture. So back to lower half of the body now. Knee bends. So again, if we are seated, we're gonna be kicking our feet out. As big a move through the knees as you can. So as high a kick without rolling backwards in your chair. So try and stay nice and tall all the way through the move. And to do that, you're gonna be using your core which we'll talk more about later. But if you are standing, then we're gonna kick our bottoms. So heels back to our bottoms. As high a kick as you can do, but it doesn't matter if you're starting a little bit lower, but try and aim for kicking your bottoms. And you'll notice, as Kerrin always says, shifting your body weight from side to side because that is how we balance, making sure your centre of gravity is over the foot that is supporting you. So are we ready? Three, two, one, away we go. So shifting that body weight and a smaller move is an easier move and that's okay. Build up that move as you get more confident and as your body wakes up a little bit. And you can have support close by if you need it. Try not to use the support. Try and get used to balancing on that one leg through shifting your body weight. And there's the timer again. Okay, back to upper body, twisty Sarah's. So another great one for working through spine, the mobility of our spine and looking after our posture. So seated or standing, Twisting as much as you can through the spine, so not just moving the arms. Notice there, my body's not moving at all. So we're actually twisting through the whole of our body. We're aiming to move through that spine. Think of bringing your shoulder forwards. So 25 seconds worth in three, two, one, away we go. So twisting that shoulder forward, and then the other side. Keep breathing as we do it. Now this is definitely using our core muscles. So the muscles in your abdomen, through your sides and in your back. So twisting round to get that movement through the spine. And one more on this side. And then we're evens. Because I wouldn't want us to be wonky. Where are we up to? Double tap. So again, back to our legs. And again, if we are seated, this one definitely work on sitting nice and tall because it's so easy to rock back as you lift that leg up twice. So we're thinking of sitting tall and the knee comes up to the hand twice. So you will be using your muscles in your belly to help keep that back sitting nice and tall. And if you are standing, same sort of thing, shifting that body weight and the knee comes up to the hand. So we're aiming for the knee to move rather than the hand going down. Again, you can use support if you need to. Um, if you are using support, maybe rather than holding on with a whole hand, maybe just resting one finger as a bit of a balance. I haven't got anything to show you, but rather than holding with your whole hand, just leaning on that support with one finger to start off with and let's see how that goes. Right, so are we ready? Double tap, three, two, one, away we go. 
So knee up to hand, shifting that body weight before we lift that knee. I know that might sound really obvious, but it's easy to forget that when we're concentrating on lifting the knee up. So shifting the body weight over and then lift the knee. And the bigger the move, the better. The more you will be working through the muscles in your legs and the muscles in your belly. Well done, okay. Um, another 25 seconds done. Um, where are we up to? Ah, ball, we need the ball. So now we're going to all be seated. So everybody sitting down in a chair, away from the back of the chair as much as you can, but safely, hopefully you can see me there. And we're putting the ball on our knees. So we're going to do the ball crunch. So forearms onto the ball, and then we're gonna roll down over that ball to squash the ball into our knees. So if I show you from the front, I'm trying to squash that ball as much as I can. Now there's a couple of things to think about, and I'll, I'll go through in a bit more detail later, but I want you to keep breathing. So you can either hold this squash for the whole of the 25 seconds, and if you do that, keep breathing all the way through, or we can push down and hold for a couple of breaths and then release, and then push down and then release. And I want you to think of really leaning forwards over that ball, so as if you're curling over the top of it. Right, 25 seconds of ball crunch in three, two, one, away we go. So lean, a couple of breaths, two, and release. Or you can hold, really lean forward and think of squashing your arms into your knees, squashing that ball as much as you can, and keep breathing. Or you can recover and then go again. And release, well done. So if you have a little rest in between, it's slightly easier, but you build up to whatever you can do. So we don't need the ball anymore. I nearly fell over my own feet then. So pop the ball down. Now we're doing bendianas. We're not actually missing anything out, Sarah. Um, twisty Sarah's are complete, and now we're doing bendianas. So this one again is movement through the spine. You can do it seated or standing. We're reaching down with one arm, and if we can, over the top with the other. So a nice big stretch through the sides, if you can reach over the top, but we're aiming for the sideways bend as a starter. Okay, so that's what we can all do, as much of a bend in the spine as we can, and if you can reach over the top, that's cherry on the icing on the cake. Yeah, that's what it is. In three, two, one, away we go. So down to the side and reaching over. I like these because they really get my back moving, but also because you get a nice stretch down your side as well. So reaching over as much as you can. Keep breathing on this one too. I catch myself holding my breath when I'm doing the stretch there. And holding our breath is not particularly good for us. Okay, right, Bendiana's complete. Bit of a tactical waggle. And um, now we're doing squatty kerrins. So sit and stands. If you can stand and you've done the exercises so far seated, now is time to have a go at standing up. So think of feet close to you. So feet as close to your chair as you can and leaning forward. So think of your weight through your feet, heavy feet pushing into the floor. And as your weight comes forward, the legs are going to do all of the work. So pushing through the heel, I think of as I'm standing up and then stand up nice and tall. So when we stand up, push through the heel, notice my weight is forward and then stand, don't finish here, stand all the way up. So chest up and bum in at the top. So we're stretching through the front of our hips. So that nice tall 
posture is what we're looking for. And then if you can, a nice controlled weight back and sit back down. So we reverse it to go back down. Do as many as you can do in the 25 seconds, even if you're trying and rocking forwards and thinking of those heavy feet, that's brilliant. So do what you can do. If you are standing and we're doing squatty kerrins, weight goes back and down. So feet are flat, weight back and down, and then standing tall at the top. So think of chest up as much as you can, weight back and down, and standing tall. So for that to happen, knees stay wide. So knees stay wide, feet stay flat, and we stand nice and tall. So we don't want our knees doing this. So we need to work through our bum to stop that happening. Right, so sit and stand or squatty kerrins, entirely up to you. These are great for working the muscles in our legs and our bum. So in three, two, one, as many as you can do. And the lower you go in that squat, the harder it is. So if you need to make the move a little bit smaller, that's absolutely fine. Weight still goes back, so still think of sticking your bum back to an imaginary chair. But if it doesn't, if you don't want to go as low, that's fine. But you go as low as you can go and stand tall at the top. Oh, we just need to do one more. And standing tall. Well done. Squatty Karen's complete. Now we're on to ankles. So if you are seated, Get yourself sitting back comfortably, back away from the edge of the chair, and we are aiming for as much movement through the ankle as you can. So pointing your toe to the floor, and then heel to the floor. Toe, heel. Think of exaggerated moves through the ankles. Keeping our ankles mobile, really important if you are on your feet and for your balance, but also it's really important, helps with your circulation. So keeping our ankles mobile is a useful thing to work on. If we are standing, I just need to move my bench out of the way. We're going to do our tightrope walking. So your imaginary tightrope on the floor, the closer your feet are together, the harder this is, the more it's going to test your balance. So if you need that safety net, if you need some support, you can do this along the edge of a work surface or a table or the back of the sofa or a banister or a person. And I know that a person is a much better option and is much better than a wall or any of those other things, unlike Karen. And we're going for heel, toe, heel, toe. And you can use your arms to help you wobble. Remember, wobbling is good. Exaggerated moves through those ankles. The heel touches the toe of the foot behind and using your arms, if you try and stay relaxed through your body so that you can use your arms to help you wobble. The closer your feet are together, the harder it is. Oh, and I'm just running out of space. And so then we're going to go backwards. So it's toe heel on the way back. So keeping our head up, keeping our shoulders relaxed. And if your feet are a little wider, then it's a little easier. It isn't gonna test your balance as much. You do what you can do. Focus on challenging yourself safely and depending on how you feel today because do you know what some days are better than others and that's perfectly okay okay i've run out of space so i'm going to do one more time because we all know the second time is better so heel toe coming forwards staying nice and relaxed i'm trying to stay relaxed through my jaw so i'm not clenching my teeth and I know that might sound a bit daft, but that does help keep everything else relaxed. If you are really tight through your jaw, then everything else tends to tense up and it's harder to wobble. So staying relaxed is actually 
quite a good thing to pay attention to and then toe heel on the way back. It's something that I'm working on when I'm on my bike, trying to stay balanced on the mountain bike because I grip the handlebars and then I catch myself gritting my teeth together, which is really not helpful. So staying relaxed through the rest of your body and hopefully wobbling away quite nicely, testing our balance all the way and I've run out of space again. Brilliant. So, bit of wobbling done, regaining our balance. I am going to change my timer today. I forgot last week and um, we nearly ended up doing 20 seconds of fast feet, but we're not going to do 20 seconds of fast feet. We're going to do, let's see, where does it stop? We're going to do 12 seconds of fast feet. Um, so fast feet is all about quick, fast moves. Running on the spot, whether you are seated or standing, I will just move my heavy bench back. So again, sitting nice and tall, and we're aiming for feet as fast as we can go. So remember, go at your pace, do the best that you can do. If it's as fast as you can go, then that is brilliant. So you might want to build up the rhythm, start slower, and then as you get into it, go a bit faster. And the same if you are standing, you might want to build up the pace a little bit, but as fast as you can go running on the spot, 12 seconds worth. So are we ready? We're gonna do this twice, of course. So the first one is a bit of a warm up. So it's gonna get our heart rate up and our breathing rate up, and that's okay. So are we ready? Three, two, one, go. So as fast as we can go. Obviously T-Rex arms are gonna come out because that's what happens when you do fast feet. Keeping breathing, well done. Okay, a bit of a tactical waggle with those legs. Doesn't matter if you're seated or standing. So can you go a little bit faster on the second time? So think of the floor being hot and you're trying to get your feet off the floor as fast as you can go. In three, two, one. Oh, here we go. So, as fast as we can go, small, small moves with the feet. Keep breathing. We're nearly there. And time, time, time. Well done. So, I will quickly change the timer back up to 25 seconds before your breathing rate settles too much. And now we're gonna do finish with our shadow boxing. Oh, what happened there? There we go. Right, back to 25 seconds. So shadow boxing, whether you are seated or standing, twisting through the body and punching fast arms. So this is really gonna use your core. The power in the punch comes from the twist of the body which comes from your core muscles if you are seated, but also from your hips if you are standing. So think of really moving and twisting through the body. So the aim is to get out of breath. So it doesn't matter what we look like, we're gonna go for it and work as hard as we can for, I couldn't do three fingers then, three rounds. Starting with 25 seconds, three, Two, one. I've just seen you put some comment about thumbs, Sarah. Thumbs up are entirely optional. You're absolutely right. I find it really difficult to keep my thumbs tucked in when I've not got boxing gloves on. So Karen and Sarah laugh at me all of the time. But do you know what? I don't care. Working as hard as we can. Punching. Stop. Time, time, time. So punching away, I'm gonna do the second one, seated. So your heart rate should be up now, your breathing rate should be up, and that's good. So second time, let's see if we can work a little bit harder. So in three, two, one, go. So punching away, twisting through that body, using your hips if you're standing, fast hands, aiming for your target. You might aim for the belly, you might aim for the head. You can punch round, you can punch 
uppercuts, aiming for the chin, it doesn't matter, but the faster you punch, the more out of breath you're gonna get. Time, time, time. Okay, so we have one round of 25 seconds to go. So no holding back, keep going to the end. This is dipping for the tape, this one. So are you ready? In three, two, one, away we go. Punching, moving your feet if you can. So even if it's moving the front foot and keeping the back foot still, that's absolutely fine as long as you are punching fast because you can still use your hips, but if you can move both feet, then try that too. It doesn't have to be big steps. Light on your feet is what we're aiming for. And time. Well done. Okay, so let your breathing rate start to settle down. Count your breaths. So if you're on your feet, just walking around, just nice and slowly, helping your breathing settle down and your heart rate settle down. If you are seated, just relax and let your breathing come back to normal. And we're going to have a little bit of an explore of our core muscles for Technique Tuesday. So I know, I think I said at the beginning, I think Karen's talked about our core before, but actually it's probably it's a while ago and it's worth a, a revisit because our core muscles are such an important part of our overall strength, our stabilizing strength. And if we think of our core of as the muscles in our abdomen, so the front of our tummies, the sides of our waist, and through into our back. So we call them the core because it's in the core, the central part of our body, all of those muscles um, in that core region. And it's sometimes easy to focus on the muscles in the front of our tummy, but we can forget about the muscles in the side and the muscles in the back. And we can take them for granted. And they are actually really, really important to stabilize our spine. So they are the muscles that help us sit up tall, as I was talking about earlier. They're the muscles that can help us when we are balancing, particularly when we've overbalanced, when we've wobbled and we're having to reposition our upper body. So they're the muscles that help with that. And they're also the muscles that protect us, protect our back from when we're, when we're lifting things or when we're reaching for things, they're the muscles that can protect our spine, the joints in our back, our vertebrae, um, from being pulled out of alignment, which can cause us all sorts of problems if that happens. So the core is actually quite important. Um, it can be a little bit harder to work your core muscles if you find um, mobility a bit a bit trickier. So some of the things that we do in Get Moving is we will, we for example, use things like the ball to help you get the feeling of pushing against something which is going to, what we would call, engage those muscles, get those muscles working. So there's a, there's a number of ways that we can do that and I'll go through a couple in a second. But a couple of things just to think about before you think about doing some core strength work. So working through those muscles in the front of our abs and our sides is really important. Um, consciously thinking about the things that you're doing every day, are you using your core muscles? Now, if you're not thinking about it, you may well be just because that's an, a, a, an automatic um, action, reaction of your body. But I also guarantee that there'll be times when you could be using your core a little bit more. Um, I was shifting some uh, a bag of, of sheet food yesterday, actually, and reaching over to pick that up I made sure that I was standing square onto the bag because it was quite heavy and I properly switched on my tummy muscles before I lifted the bag up to protect my back. So 
and I've learned that the hard way because I've lifted some stuff before that's not been that heavy but then I've ended up with a, a back that's that's telling me I've hurt it so um, thinking about using your core for the rest of the day when are you using it how are you using it better that's that's a question that I'd like you to ask yourself but also I want you to keep breathing and we talk about this a lot as well it's really easy to hold our breath particularly if we're working through our core muscles our ab muscles and we're trying to work hard so we grip in hard and then we hold our breath which is not good so it's a good skill to practice to be breathing whilst you are still working your core muscles so that's the other thing I want you to think about as you're practicing some of these so I thought what we do to start off with I'm just going to go back over two of the exercises that we do um, through get moving periodically one of which we've done today so that ball squash um, and also link it to when we talk about doing either the twisty Sarah's or the punching what happens with the muscles in your tummy so first of all this one that ball squash if you think about actually rounding down over that ball rather than just pushing your arms down then the rounding down over the ball is going to use more, get your muscles in your abdomen working more. So if you just test it out, if you just push your arms down and have a bit of a poke of your tummy and see how soft or hard those tummy muscles are feeling. And then if you imagine curling down over that ball and now Feel your tummy muscles hopefully they feel a little bit harder they should be contracting now because you're curling down over and squashing that ball down so when you get that feeling of your muscles working to work them harder really think of pushing those muscles how do I do it I think of pushing the muscles out so I think of pushing against my skin almost. So think of really squeezing yourself in the middle and then breathe. Because the danger is we go and then we don't breathe and we're holding our breath and we don't want people turning blue. So as you round down over that ball, think of really squashing the ball down, but also now think of squeezing through that, those tummy muscles. And hopefully you will feel a bit of a difference. And then another core exercise that we do reasonably frequently, and we do it when we're in face-to-face -face classes, which we hopefully will be back to very soon. Um, we'll be sending a newsletter out. We're just we're just finalising dates um, for that. But yes, we're very very excited about getting to see you all very soon. Um, so. When you think about, when we do face-to-face -face classes, we do the Palov um, core exercise, the Palov press with the resistance band, and that uses the muscles down the side of your body. Now, we've also introduced the straight arm Palov, where we push against the side of our knee. So we've got straight arms, and we're pushing sideways, almost trying to twist, but then resisting that twist with our legs. And that, if you feel the muscle in the side, the muscles in the sides of your waist, it is using the muscles in the front of your tummy and it's concentrating on the muscles in the side as well because it's important to work all of them. So that one, when we go from one side to the other, again, it's really easy to try and hold our breath. So I don't want you to hold your breath, but I do want you to think about which muscles are working more when you do either the ball crush or the Palov press um, and see if you can work through. You can have a bit of a practice uh, throughout the rest of the day and we will be coming back to those um, throughout the week. But also just pay attention to when you're sitting, are you sitting tall and are you supporting your weight 
with your back muscles and your stomach muscles. And if you're sitting and you're sort of like this in the back of your chair, then your muscles are probably not going to be working as much as they could. So sitting up tall automatically requires you to support your body, your body weight through your muscles. So that's something to be thinking about throughout the day, which is what we're saying when we talk about the twisting moves that we do. They don't happen by accident, they happen because our muscles are working. So just pay attention, have a bit of an experiment throughout the day and let us know how often you use your core muscles and you didn't realise. Um, so uh, let us know through the website or let us know um, in the comments in the comments on the Facebook group. That would be fantastic. Um, right, that's enough wittering. I will um, say goodbye for now. Karen will be back tomorrow with Wobble Wednesday at 11 as ever. Enjoy this sunshine if you can. It is a bit chilly out there, so lots of layers, and I definitely recommend a hat because my ears I had a buff on, but my ears were cold this morning. So uh, hat and gloves, definitely hat and gloves, but it is beautiful in that sunshine. So if you can get outside for some fresh air, then do. And um, have a fabulous rest of your Tuesday. And uh, we will see you very soon. Bye all.